Okay guys, welcome to this video. The first part of two parts on how to make a weather app using a weather API. Now, uh, this is where it starts getting fun. This is where it starts getting fun for me when I could get information from somewhere else and display it and dynamic information, right? It changes and you don't have to make those changes. So before I found APIs, it was all static HTML and everything that was on my page, I had to write. Now this is where it changes. It's kind of giving you a bit of a back end to deal with. Um, as you can see on the screen now is what we're going to be building. We're going to be building uh, an app, very simple app. Gives you a city name, town name, a little icon for the weather, your temperature and uh, your description of the temperature. Now this is all coming from the free code camp uh, weather API. I say free code camp, it's, I think it's the open weather map API and free code camp has got some kind of deal with them. So you don't actually have to sign up for an API key, which is the reason we're using this, you know, you can check out openweathermap.com, uh, I think it is, .org, uh, and sign up there for an API key and do it that way. Bit more hassle for what we're doing here. Free Code Camp, the link to the API is in the description, so you can get straight onto that. We're going to be doing all of this in CodePen, right? More specifically, we want to be doing it in the HTTPS version. So HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash codepen.io. The reason being is when we get to the, the JavaScript is we're going to be using uh, the geolocator and that doesn't like sending requests from unsecure um, servers, basically. So that's why you have to use the HTTPS. So that's going to be in the second part, but make sure you're on it anyway uh, on the HTTPS and we should be good to go. Right, so this is what we're making and we're going to jump straight into Copen now and start making it. A few things about CodePen, it has a few nice features like Emmet installed. So what we want to do first is we want to make this container, right? With this blackboard around it. And usually you would go div with a class of container. Then you would have to close it off and put the end in tags like that. It's a lot of typing. What Emmet allows you to do, which is brilliant, it allows you to actually just say dot container, right? And why that's so good is when you hit tab, it writes it all out for you. It's kind of shorthand, right? So dot, full stop, period, to start writing a class. Then whatever you want, then hit tab and it'll write it out for you. Right, so we have our first thing, that container. So let's put a bit of style to this container so we can see it, right? So we're actually a little section in the middle, but with a full height. We've got a board around it. So what we want to do is we want to give it that width, but instead of giving it a width as usual, we're going to give it a max width. So let's write this container, and let's say max width of 550 pixels. Oops, pixels. And the reason it's a max width is because we're saying, hey, if you have the space, take up all that side, take up 550 pixels, right? That's your limit. But if you haven't got a space, so on mobile maybe, yeah, just feel free to shrink down. So that's what max width is. Get used to using them, because um, it really helps with mobile. Instead of using media queries all the time, the max width will just take care of it for you. Right, and the second one is the height, right? Now you might think we'd be able to do 100% and it'd be fine and dandy. That's not the case because 100% is takes up the space of its parent container. And if there's nothing in that container, you know, it gets a bit, it's not as simple as you think. So, the better way to do it is get a viewport height. Now what a viewport height is, this is the viewport. Every bit of the page that you see is in view. So that's your viewport. There's also VW, which is viewport width. So 100VH is basically saying 100% of this 
I want, right? So let's put that border around it now. And let's see what's going on. So we're going to do a one pixel border, solid, and it's going to be uh, black, right? There you go, straight away you can see this. Boom, that line there. The other line is over here somewhere. So let's do that, let's move into the center. So let's give it a margin zero at the top and bottom, an auto at the left and right. So it has to automatically find the middle because it's saying, hey, the left and right have to be the same. So if I'm one pixel, he's gotta be one pixel. Oh, now there's 19 pixels over there. Right, so I've gotta be 10 pixels and 10 pixels. So you'll use that if you're new to CSS, HTML, you'll use margin zero auto on everything, right? So we have this container now. It's looking pretty good. So what can we do now? Let's let's start let's start putting in some of this uh, placeholder text and this image and stuff, right? So the first thing we want to do is our city name. So I've got this in a, a H2 because it's our second biggest font next to this one, right? Let's give it an ID. So if we're doing an Emmet H2 hash and an ID of city, then hit that tab button. Boom, we've got it. So I'm going to put in a default name. So I'm going to put in Leeds, which is the closest city to where I am. Right, it's looking pretty good. Right, the next section, all this section here is in its own div. Right, so we're going to make a big section and put all these in it. So why don't we just call that, give that a class name of um, middle, because it's in the middle, right? So class name of middle, and in that we had the icon. So we can just type IMG, we'll, and if we hit tab, it'll uh, add a whole image um, component, whole image tag to it. But we also want to give it an ID, so when we get to the JavaScript later, we can hook onto this and change it. So. I'm going to give this an idea of icon. So image, hashtag icon is image tag with a ID of icon, please. Hit tab. There we go. Uh, I'm going to put icon in this alt tag just so now we can see it. So there we go. We're going to do this source when it comes to the JavaScript rather than adding an image, take it away, right? So that image is fine. The next thing we have is we actually have this temperature. Now these two are separate entities because this degree symbol was massive uh, when I did it the first time because this is so big. So this is its own thing and this is its own thing. So this is a H1, so this is a H1, and this is a span. So let me do this for you. So let's let's put it inside its own container so it lives together. Let's call this uh, degrees, I guess. So I've got a div with degrees, and inside that is going to live our H1, which is going to have an ID of temp, right? Let's put 19 degrees, I wish. Uh, and the second thing is that little symbol, the little degree symbol, and we said we're going to do that inside a span, so just hit span and tab. And it actually has a unique code uh, for this, which is and... Hashtag 176, and there we go. You can see it very small there, right? I'll zoom in a little bit. It's so small, it's right there. Right, so last thing we need to do is add this description. And this is not inside this degrees box, but it is inside this middle box, right? So make sure we're outside of this div. And we, but we're still inside the middle box. And this is just a H3. We also need an ID because we need to change it in the JavaScript. So it's going to be H3 and it's going to be called desk. So a description, right? And let's call it sunny because we're, we're being optimistic today. Cool, right. So we actually have, other than the icon, which is going to come later, we actually have all the HTML in there. But it just looks a bit naff, right? So we've got to style this up. So let's go to our CSS, and the first thing we can do is say, right, let's space it out properly here, because 
this is its own container, and this is its own container effectively. If you have H1, then you have the middle container. So let's do it in a grid system so we can give the top bit 20% of the space and the middle bit 80% of the space. So we're going to use grid, which is a new, not very new um, system, I guess, of um, organizing content on a page. So we want to say grid template, and it's actually rows because we're across, right? So gr grid template rows. Oh, I should actually say it's a grid. So display grid. So display grid first to say, hey, I'm going to use the grid method of laying this out. Now, grid template rows, you need to say, hey, grid, this is what I want you to do. I want the top row to be 20% and the second row to be 80%. So just do that. 20%, 80%, right? Right, so we have this now. It's a little bit away from the top, but we're kind of across to the, the left. So let's center all that because we are centering everything. So we can just say, oh, text align, center. Right, cool, we're in the middle now. So this is looking good. Why don't we change the sizes of all these texts and get them looking a bit more like what we have over here? So. Let's go to on top of the container, put all the H1 stuff up here, all the typography. So first thing we need to do, we actually need to say, um, we need to take some of the margins off stuff because we don't want the margins. So let's do it globally by selecting all our um, tags we're using. So H1, H2, H3 and span. And let's just say margin zero right you see i was just together now um this leads us a little high up now so let's let's put some padding into our container so let's say padding let's say we want 25 pixels at the top and bottom so our pole leads down and five pixels either side just give it a little bit either side cool right let's do this h1 then so h1 I'm going to give it a font size. We're going to do this in relative uh, M, so REMS. And the reason we're doing that is because if you shrink fonts, you know, on different browsers, they'll react differently. So if you say REM, it will be relative to the browser's default size. So your phone, um, Chrome, Safari, Internet Explorer, whatever, has a default font size and it's usually 16 pixels usually so you can actually set it yourself uh, and basically if you do rem so we're going to say 16 rem here it will say relative to the font size of the browser or you can actually stipulate in your css this is going to be 16 i think it's 16 times that size so if you if the browser size shrinks will shrink with it, right? So H1 is a giant 16 rem. H2 is gonna be, um, let's do font size of, let's do three rem. Right, so we've got a font size of three rem there. So that's looking better. H3 is gonna be a font size. Um, let's do, 1.4 rem for this. All right, so yeah, looking good, looking good. And the little degree span, so we're going to give that a font size as well. Let's say, hey, you can have a font size of um, 6 rem. Okay, so it's a fairly big font size. But you still notice that this degree symbol is below but this is in a container, so we can do this with grid as well. So let's do a little bit more grid. So if we then say, right, we want to get this degree symbol at the side of the temperature. We know we're both in the degrees container. So why don't we say grid, uh, display grid, 
by grid, right? So now you're going to be a grid, but we want it to be um, grid template. Last time we were rows because we were going down the page. This time we're going across. So we want to be columns. So grid template columns, and we can say auto auto, right? So basically, there's two elements: the temperature and the degree symbol. We're saying, hey, just take a whatever space you want. Now the problem is they're quite far away now. So we can push them all together by saying, yo, grid, whatever you've got inside you, just stick it in the center for me, right? And you do that by saying justify content center. And that pulls that right into the center. There we go. Looking good. Right. So I think we are nearly there with this. Um, yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. We could probably move this across here a little bit. Let's do that. Let's give it a margin left just to compensate for that little degree symbol. Uh, let's give it a margin left of two rem. Just kind of pull it across there a little bit. And I think that looks good. So that's our CSS and our HTML for this weather app. I hope that was easy enough to follow. I didn't want to put too much in there. I was crazy. Um, we could spend we could spend a, a week, couldn't we? Just changes this and designing it a different way. So the next video, part two, is going to deal with the JavaScript. Uh, we're going to use a lot of jQuery in there to make the API call, just because that makes it a lot less code, a lot easier for these short videos. Uh, we're going to show you what comes back then how we can attach that to these elements. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Don't forget to check out the next video to complete this. Um, the links for the code pen at this stage are in the description. And a link to the code pen, the finished code pen, is also in that description. And um, feel free to subscribe, like, you know, do the commenting, whatever you do. Uh, and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much, guys. See you soon.